السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات و... الله وحده لا شريك له به ومن اهتدى All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We worship Him. We seek His assistance. We seek His tawfiq. We pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to learn the beneficial knowledge and to give us the tawfiq after that to apply it. اللهم آمين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم And I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal on this night the night of the 26th of the year 1438 since Hijrat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which translates into uh, August the 19th of the Gregorian year 2017. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make it a blessed night. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make all those who are attending, uh, both brothers and sisters, or who might be tuning in online, to make them blessed in themselves and in their families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our health. May Allah bless our uh, time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq Oh, it looks like there's some biscuits or something real quick, snacks. So if you want to grab something real quick, inshallah, as we're starting, you're welcome to do so. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand the deen, to understand the aqidah, to believe in Allah azza wa jal the way he would like us to believe in him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we're doing tonight. And this is what we've been doing for a couple of months now. As you know, we've been commenting on this great text of aqidah called Al-Aqeedah Al-Tahawiyya after titled after its author Al-Imam Abu Ja'far Al-Tahawi Al-Hanafi from a great scholar of Madhab Al-Imam Abu Hanifa Al-Nu'man Radiyallahu An and uh, this is a great text that the scholars have agreed that this represents the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah and this is what we are interested in the Aqeedah and the understanding of the Sahaba of the Tabi'een, of the Tabi'a Tabi'een, of the great A'imma, of the great scholars of Islam that um, uh, have the right understanding of this Aqeedah. Uh, for those who were with us last week, you remember we started this new, if you wish, chapter or topic, right? We called it, this is the topic about our belief in Al-Quran, being the Kalamullah, being the speech of Allah Azza wa We started commenting on those few statements today, inshallah. I think we should be able to finish this topic. Next Saturday, we will start a new topic. You see that the Aqeedah is actually statement, right? We've been commenting on it statement by statement. But every few statements can be gathered or can, are linked together into a one topic, right? So we started, if you remember, we started with the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, Iman Billah. Then we moved on several statements uh, in this aqeedah about the belief in Rasulullah sallallahu right? Started by wa inna muhammadan abduhu al-mustafa and several uh, statements after that. Now, in this 45th statement, wa inna al-Qur'ana kalamullah, this is when we started a new topic. Now.
So we started saying that this is a topic, this is a new uh, topic of uh, talk about or the belief in the Quran or the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Imam Abu Jafar quickly what we said is by saying wa inna al-Qur'an kalam Allah and that the Quran is the speech of Allah and that the Quran is the speech of Allah and here he is actually affirming this belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah who believe that the Quran that we actually that is printed in the Mus'haf is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal and quickly we said his saying wa inna is to link it back to what he started by saying uh, that we believe in Allah as one and with no partners. We say in the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, Inna Allah wahidun la sharika la. That Allah is one no, with no partners. Then many statements later he said, Wa inna Muhammadan. So under the same Tawheed, we also believe that Muhammad is his chosen servant, right? In here he also he continues as if he is linking back to it and he's saying, Wa inna al Qur'ana. So this means that the Quran or the, our belief in this belief that the Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is from a Tawheed. Anybody remembers how is the belief in the Quran is part of Tawheed? We talked about that brothers. Let me see if you remember that. How is the link between a Tawheed and this talk about the Quran as, as a speech of Allah Azza wa Jal? What is the linkage? Why is this part of Tawheed? Yani as if the Imam, yani I'm trying to make it hopefully visually clear to you. As if the Imam Abu Ja'far al tahawi who is documenting the aqeedah of the Imam Abu Hanifa, correct? طيب. As if he is saying, we say with respect to Tawheed, three points under that. There are three points under Tawheed. So we say in the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, two, two, two points, Colin. The first point that Allah is one with no partners. That's the first point. Second point, that Muhammad is his servant, his chosen servant, and selected messenger, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, prophet, and the messenger he is pleased with. And then several statements. Now, third point, that Al Quran is the speech of Allah. Why is that under Tawheed? What is the linkage? Why? Fadal. Iman is uh, believing in the books of Allah. Hey, Ahsan, Barak Allah Khik, Barak Allah Khik, Ya Khwan, because of Tawheed, when we talk about Tawheed, Tawheed is nothing but the belief, the Iman in Allah Azza wa Jal. What is Tawheed other than Iman in Allah Azza wa Jal that He is one in His uh, Lordship, and He was one in His Godship, He is one in His names and attributes, right? This is, it is the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Tayyip, talking about the speech of Allah and the Quran is nothing but the talk about one of the pillars of that Iman. Al Iman, how many pillars? How many pillars there are for the Iman, brothers and sisters? There are six. One of them is what? The Iman in the books. One of those books is what? Al Quran, which we're talking about. So talking about Al Quran being the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about one pillar of Al Iman. And the Iman, talking about the Iman, is a Tawheed. So this is why this is coming under his saying, we say with respect to Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal, that the Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Clear? I want to make sure that we're clear. We're dissecting these, this Aqeedah, believe it, word by word, right? We don't want to miss anything. We want to understand why, what is the occasion? What is the occasion that this is mentioned under Tawheed? Why is he linking it to Tawheed? Clear, Abu Abdul Rahman? Ahsan, barakallah fiqh. Okay. Then we said the Quran, also quickly, we said the Quran is a name to any recited book. So, the Tawrat is a Quran. The Injil is a Quran. The Quran is a Quran. Suhuf, uh, Musa are a Quran. Right? We said we say because this is a common name to any recited book, but the fact that it is specifically now used to refer to a mushaf or the Quran that was revealed to Rasulullah is similar to the aspect that this deen is called the Islam, the deen of the Prophet is called the Islam, although every religion, every deen before Rasulullah was also Islam. 
يعني the deen of Musa is the Islam. The deen of Ibrahim عليه السلام is the Islam. Why? Because the Islam in its meaning is to submit to Allah عز وجل by توحيد. To submit to Allah عز وجل by obedience. So every religion from the time of Nuh, from the time of Adam عليه السلام, they all believed in the Islam. But the Islam was came to be known specifically the religion of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Likewise, the name of Quran. came to uh, 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 point to the book that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but every recited book is a quran then he said wa inna alqur'ana kalamullah and that the quran is the speech of allah azza wa jalla we said the speech is anything that is said that can be heard that can be understood by others and if you remember we said talking that the speech of the soul talking to myself is not called a kalam it's not called kalam if i'm thinking to myself inwardly that's not that is not called kalam likewise if i talk and only myself can hear it nobody else can hear me then this is not kalam or if i talk internally even if i am moving my lips and tongue but nobody else can hear this is also not kalam So al-kalam, by definition, brothers and sisters, is anything that can be heard by others and be understood by others. Clear? Because we're trying to figure out what is this, what is, what is it meant by kalam, right? Kalamullah. Then we notice that it was added to Allah Azza wa Jal. Remember, we talked about this, and this is quite important. That's why I'm going to actually repeat it in a little, little, little bit of emphasis. This is something that we talked about. We notice that. In here, this kalam is added or attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal. Kalamullah, speech of Allah. This structure of the language, this structure of the language, we call it in the Arabic language, al-idafa. Yani, you add one word to another. And this is actually very common, not only in the Arabic language, but in all the languages, I'm pretty sure. Even in the English, I'm pretty sure. I don't know Chinese. I don't know German, but I'm pretty sure it exists because it is so useful in any language. Like we said last week, last week, last year, last week. <laughs> if I say this is a pen, everybody understands what what a pen is, right? If I say this is Samir's pen, now you understand that this is a pen. But not only a pen, it also belongs to who? Samir. If I say this is Yusuf's book, now we understand this is a book, but also there is an added knowledge now, right? Something more we know that this also belongs to Brother Yusuf, right? If I say that car, everybody understands what a car is, right? But if I say this is uh, Ata'ullah's car, now I understand, mashallah, it's a brand new car. But it belongs to <laughs> Brother Ataullah. Very nice car. So the, you see, this is always this is used so commonly in the language, right? But we say this idafa, this addition, attributing something to something else or someone else, is of two types in the language. There is idafa, a'yan, things, objects, creatures that can exist on on their own. Or this addition can be of something that cannot, it's a meaning, cannot exist on its own. Let's take a few examples. Always by example, they make cle things clear, right? You agree? Right. Let's take, what, what do we mean by that? Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the ayah of uh, Surah Al-Shams. He says, فَقَالَ لَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ نَاقَةَ اللَّهِ وَسُقْيَاهَا Naqat Allah is the she camel of Allah. Notice that Allah Azza wa Jal added this she camel to himself. He says, Naqat Allah. Now, Naqa, which is the she camel, is this a creature that can exist on its own? Yes. It's an object. It's a, it's, I'm sorry, not an object. It's a, crea it's a creature. It's a living creature. Thing that can exist on its own. You can see a she camel walking. You can, right? You can see it. So we say this addition. You know, now this is something that can exist on its own that was added to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Similarly, we can say Baytullah. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith sahih, Majtama'a qawmun fi baytin min buyutillah illa haffathumul malaika. Hadith. Yani no people gather, get together in a house of the houses of Allah. Bayt min buyutillah. Baytullah. What is baytullah? Al-masjid. It is added to Allah azza wa jal. Baytullah. Right? Right. Is the masjid something that can exist on its own? Yes. It's a house, right? It's a, it's a building that can exist on its own. You say, Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ Abd of Allah. Abdullah, servant of Allah. Who is, is it in reference to? To Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, when the servant of Allah, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he stood up in the Kaaba to invoke Allah Azza wa Jal, they almost attacked him. طيب. Abdullah, this idafa, Abd, can, it, can he or she exist on their own? Servant? Yes. What is the benefit of this type of addition? Honoring. To honor that thing or that somebody. Abdullah is to honor that Abd. Baytullah is to honor this Bayt because this is the best place on earth. Buyutullah are better than other places than, than the Masajid. The Masajid are the best of the places. So to honor that. Na, uh, naqatullah, the she camel of Allah, for what purpose? To honor that she camel, that Allah Azza wa Jal chose that particular she camel and asked the people of who? Of Salih, yani Salih alayhi salatu was salam, was telling or warning his people, don't touch this particular camel, she camel. Don't, priv don't harm it, right? Don't hurt it in any way. Let it eat and let it... Uh, let it uh, graze, let it drink, don't touch it. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal chose it out of all the she camels. So this is in honor to that she camel. And so on and so forth. Ardullah. Alam takun, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, the angels will say to those people who uh, did not migrate from a place where they cannot show their religion, right? They will, tell, they will tell them, أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَ فَتُهَاجِرُ Was the earth of Allah not, you know, uh, uh, big enough and, you know, vast enough so that you migrate to a place where you can actually practice your religion? أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ For what purpose? To honor it. The other type is to add a meaning to Allah Azza wa Jalla. إضافة معنى That cannot exist on its own. For example, we say Rahmatullah, the mercy of Allah or Allah's mercy. Is the mercy, can the mercy exist on its own without somebody whose adjective or attribute is mercy? Yani in other words, you can actually think about it. Have, has any one of you met mercy walking down the street? Have you seen mercy just walking, met a mercy walking down the street? Cannot exist. Mercy has no meaning out in and out of itself in the sense that it exists as a separate thing, right? Always comes as a way of, of um, uh, as an attribute to somebody who can be described. You say this is a merciful person. This is a compassionate person, right? Compassion doesn't exist out of its own. You can't see it walking down the street, can you now? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So it always comes as a way of uh, describing somebody. So you say, Qudratullah, the power of Allah. You say, Ilmullah, uh, the knowledge of Allah. Sama'ullah, uh, the hearing of Allah. Basarullah, the seeing of Allah Azza wa He is all, the all seeing, He is the all hearing, right? Iradatullah, the will of Allah. Can the will walk down the street like this? Be a, a, something that exists out of its own? Cannot. There's no such will like, a, a, as a separate thing. But you say this is the will of somebody. My will, your will, Allah's will, right? So it has to be in reference to someone, right? Iradatullah. Wala yakun illa ma yurid. Remember the statement that we, dis that we commented uh, you know, back a few months ago. Illa ma yurid. Yani, except what Allah Azza wa Jal wants. This is a reference to Iradatullah, the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. What is the meaning of this idafa of meaning? 
it means that this is an attribute. So when we say that Sama'ullah, the hearing of Allah, it means that one of the attributes of Allah is hearing. Iradatullah, it means one of the attributes of Allah is the will. He has a will. Ilmullah, it means one of the attributes, one of the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jal is that he has knowledge. Likewise, going back, why, why are we discussing all of this? Not, this is not an Arabic language course, you know, it's not, we're not studying here Arabic language. We're studying Aqidah, right? But it is a tool to understand. So what was the original discussion? The original discussion, we went into all of this to go back and explain what is Kalamullah. He said, وَإِنَّ الْقُرْآنَ Notice, all of this to actually describe this, Kalamullah. What does it mean, Kalamullah? Is Kalam something separate of Allah Azza wa Jal? created and is being honored by being attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal. Some people say that by the way, even today. They say the Quran is something or Kalam is actually something separate, a created thing that Allah Azza wa Jal created into Jibreel. And Jibreel came down, descended with it upon the Prophet There are people who believe this even today. We say no, that's wrong. That's wrong because Al-Kalam cannot exist in and out of itself. It does not exist as a separate thing. Al-Kalam is always in reference to the person who spoke it. Right? Have you, have you ever such or seen out of its own? There is such thing. But Al-Kalam is, is a meaning when in here, when it was attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal, we say that this Kalam is now an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. It means that one of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal is that he speak and one of those speeches and the words of Allah Azza wa Jal is this very Quran that he revealed upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is a Quran. So the Quran is a speech of Allah Azza wa Jal that he spoke reality, in reality. In reality. He didn't just create it as a separate thing. So all of this, Yaqwan, I, I wanted to actually make sure that we all understand the difference so that you have an argument. Brothers and sisters, don't make a mistake and say, think that Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah don't have arguments. Wallahi, we have the strongest, we have the best argument, right? Because it is the argument of Allah Azza wa Jalla. It's not my argument. I'm not bringing this from myself. I'm not making this up. This is the understanding of the Sahaba, of the Immat al-Islam, including Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam al-Shafi'i, Imam Ahmad, Imam al-Nawawi, etc., etc., all of the scholars. And like I said, I'm using one of the explanations, is uh, the, ex the explanation of an Imam Ibn Abi al-Izz al-Hanafi, from Madhab, another scholar from Madhab al-Imam Abu Hanifa. They all have this understanding. This is the understanding, the true understanding that we should have with respect to the speech of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So it is in reality the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. It is not the speech of Jibreel. It is not the speech of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. He spoke it. He spoke this Quran. And Jibreel heard it from Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he brought it down and descended with it upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who in turn conveyed it to Quraysh and to humanity uh, beyond Quraysh. Is that clear? So, and, and others, some others, of, obviously they say also that Allah Azza wa Jal made this Quran in the Lawh al-Mahfuz. You know Lawh al-Mahfuz, right? That Allah Azza wa Jal ordered the pen to write everything that's going to happen. He wrote all the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal in this, in this Allah al mahfuz They said Allah Azza wa Jal also wrote the Quran or made the Quran written in Allah al mahfuz and Jibreel came to Allah al mahfuz and read it from there and came down with it. We say no, because reading it from Allah al mahfuz is not called kalam. That's not kalam. That's why you see now why we're actually making definition of every word. We say sorry, but that you don't call it kalamullah. Because the kalam is what can be heard, what can be heard by others, and has a meaning. Right? So making signs is not a is not, is not kalam. It has to be, it has to be with the sound, with letters that can be heard and can be understood. 
So we say kalam Allah, it means that Allah Azza wa Jal spoke it in its meaning, in its letters. It's not something that was written in, or that Allah Azza wa Jal made it into something and then Jibreel came into that something and took it from there and descended upon the Prophet That's all deviated understanding. We say kalam Allah is a sifa, is an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal, like all the other attributes, right? And Allah Azza wa Jal speaks when he wishes, what he wishes, we don't know how. We don't know how. Our speech is different than his speech, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, as if, you know, as if somebody maybe still in, is unsure about this, right? He's like, okay, maybe this is a speech of figure. How about this is a speech of figure? Yani al-kalam is being attributed to Allah Azza wa Jal, not in reality, but it's a speech of figure. Yani as if Allah said such and such. We say he's here, Imam Abu Ja'far al-Tahawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he's actually making it so clear beyond the hint of doubt. Look at the next statement. Then Imam Abu Ja'far says in the following statement, he says, Minhu bada bila kayfiyyatin qawla. It originated from him. Who him? From Allah. Him is referring to Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because this is, in, again, he said, Kalamullah. Minhu bada, yani it is the speech of Allah. It originated from Him, from Allah Azza wa Jal. It originated from from Him as something spoken. It originated from Him as something spoken. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal spoke it. You see, He's making it beyond the hint of doubt, clear, still clear that this is something that Allah Azza wa Jal spoke. And he said, and this is exactly what Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah say, they say that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. It, is this, it was brought down, sent down, munazzal, right, by Jibreel. It is not created as a wahi, as a revelation upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It started from Allah Azza wa Jal and to him it shall return. And to Allah it shall return. Right. Notice that he said, minhu bada'a. Yani it started from him. So where is the origin? This min, by the way, is one of the letters of meaning in the Arabic language. We call it Ahruf al-Ma'ani, and it has a meaning. This min in here, eh, Shaykh Ammar, it actually refers to the origin, min al-ibtida'iyya, yani it ibtada'a min Allah. So it started from Allah. This Qur'an started from Allah. It did not start from anybody else. It did not start from Jibreel. It did not start from Mu uh, I'm sorry, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. It did not start from Lawh al mahfuz It started from Allah Azza wa Jal himself. He said, Minhu bada. Yani it started, it originated from Allah Azza wa Jal. Again, he says, Bila kayfiyya, without us knowing how. This is exactly what we say. Because some people say, but wait a minute, when you say that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks, and we speak, aren't you now making Allah Azza wa Jal similar to his creation? We say, no, we're not. Because we say, we don't, we're not saying how, and we don't know how. Much similar to every other attribute. Exactly what we say to like every other attribute. Allah Azza wa Jal sees, we don't know how. We know what it means, but we don't know how. Although we know Allah Azza wa Jal hears, we know what that means. But we don't know how. Likewise, we are saying that this is the speech of Allah, but we're not saying how He spoke it. We don't know how. The how is beyond our comprehension. The how He spoke, or how He speaks, is beyond our comprehension. So that's why Imam Abu Jafar he's saying, Be like I fear without us knowing how. We're not saying how. We're saying speak, Allah Azza wa spoke it. And notice that He said, Qawlan. Yani to emphasize it even further, he is saying that he actually originated from him as something that is spoken. It's a speech. Like Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا كَلَّمَ تَكْلِيمًا The scholars of the Arabic language, they say, when you actually emphasize a verb with the origin of it, it always means that this is in reality. كَلَّمَ تَكْلِيمًا and some people, uh, by the way, one of the conviction or the belief of certain groups, they say, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى It doesn't mean that he spoke to him directly in reality. It means that Allah Azza wa Jal created the speech into the tree and the tree talked to Musa. Ya Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا 
كلم تكليما it cannot mean anything but he spoke to Musa and Musa heard Allah Azza wa Jal directly like Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam also heard Allah Azza wa Jal directly without any intermediary on the day of the Mi'raj when he was ascended so we say that this speech is reality is in reality Allah Azza wa Jal talked to him and we say that this uh, uh, Jibreel descended with it upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Nahl قُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ تَنْزِيلُ لَقُلْ نَزَّلَهُ رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ Say, يعني يا Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam رُوحُ الْقُدُسِ Who is Ruh Al-Qudus? Jibreel Alaihi Wasallam has brought it down from your Lord with truth. In another ayah, تَنْزِيلٌ مِنْ حَكِيمٍ حَمِيدٌ Surah Fussilat, falsehood cannot come from it or to it, from before it or behind it. It was sent by the all-wise, worthy of all, of all praise. So the Quran did not start from anybody else except from Allah Azza wa Jal. It started from Allah Azza wa Jal and it came down as a speech that can be heard by, from Allah Azza wa Jal. Right. What is so interesting, and this is what we said last week, is that those people who deny this attribute of speech to Allah Azza wa Jal. What is so interesting and ironic is to say that how come the creation, me and you, even the animals, even the kingdom of the animals, there is literally, literally no cre living creature that does not speak. And they say that Allah Azza wa Jal does not speak. Imagine the creation. We are the created. Allah Azza wa Jal created us. We speak and Allah Azza wa Jal does not speak. How can that be? He is the creator, subhanallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And created us. And imagine we have an ability and Allah Azza wa Jal does not have it. Look at the deviation in the, in the way of thinking. طيب. Then, <coughs> So his saying, Imam Abu Ja'far, he's saying, مِنْهُ بَدَأَ بِلَا كَيْفِيَّةٍ قَوْلًا From him, or it originated from him as something spoken without us knowing how. By the way, this is an indirect way of refuting those who say that it did not start from Allah Azza wa Jal. That it started from al al Mahfuz, or it started from something that Allah Azza wa Jal created and Jibreel came and read it from there, right? He is refuting them because he's saying, no, 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 no. It started from Allah Azza wa Jal in reality as a something that was spoken, right? But we don't know how. We don't know how he spoke it. So he's refuting that uh, uh, conviction or that type of belief and saying that this is actually misguided. It is not a meaning that was made into Jibreel. It is not something that Allah made Jibreel. It, it made it occur to Jibreel as a meaning and then he went down with it or that he put it in the Lawh al-Mahfud and then Jibreel came to read, to read from it, all of this is wrong. He's saying it started from him as something spoken without knowing how it started. Because it is something that is beyond our comprehension. The last thing, the last thing that I want to actually talk, we will quickly talk about this. If we say that this is the speech of Jibreel, or if we say that this is the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by Allah, how would that be miraculous? Because if Jibreel could make something like a Quran, then somebody from the humans could make some, also something similar to it. If Muhammad والسلام, could come up with something like a Quran, then potentially some of the Arabs at, the, at his time who were very good in Arabic could also make something similar to it. It wouldn't be miraculous. But Allah Azza wa Jal actually challenged he took Quraysh to task. He took Allah Azza wa Jal took Quraysh to task, knowing that they were the best in the Arabic language in terms of skills, and challenged them. in kuntum fi mimma nazzalna ala abdina fatu bi surah. If you were in doubt of what was revealed to our servant, then by all means go ahead and make something similar to it. Fadl. Bring something similar to the Quran. Can you put something similar to the Quran? Can you come up with something similar to the Quran? He challenged them, Allah Azza wa Jal challenged them. When he challenged them, then you know it, it cannot be the speech of anybody except Allah Azza wa Jal. Because only the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is what is miraculous. Nobody can do something similar. Clear? Right. 
Then going to the next statement, he said, وَصَدَّقَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ حَقًّا And the believers, and I'm sorry, we missed this. وَأَنزَلَهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَحْيًا the, the, second state, the second portion of the statement, he said, وَأَنزَلَهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَحْيًا And he sent it down, sorry, And he sent it down to his messenger as a revelation. So, also, so Imam Abu Jafar is saying that it started from Allah Azza wa Jal as something spoken. Jibreel heard it from him, Subhanahu wa Taala, and then he sent it down upon the Prophet وسلم, as a revelation. Yani Jibreel came down with it in pieces, obviously in portion, over the period of time, and then he revealed it to, to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it is a revelation. So it was sent down in Zal, Tanzil, Tanzil min Hakim and Hamid, and it was revealed, or it was as a revelation to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In other words, he's saying that it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Uhiya ila Muhammad. This Quran was it was revealed to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is Wahi? What is revelation, brothers and sisters? Revelation in the Sharia of Islam, it is actually to inform. It is the process by which Allah Azza wa Jal informs a prophet or a messenger through multiple means. It could be by books. It could be by messengers, yani from the angels. And an angel coming down and, and uh, deliver the message to the prophet or to the messenger. Or it could be through a dream because you know that the dream of the messengers and of the prophets والسلام, is also a ru'ya. It is also one type of wahi. The last one is we call it ilham. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal makes it occur to the prophet or to the messenger what he wants to inform them of. So there are four ways. There are the books, the revelation through books, revelation through messengers from the angels, revelation through the dreams. Now, is that revelation through the dreams applied to everybody now? Or only the messengers and the prophets? Because now people come, well, wait a minute, I saw a dream also, you know? I see dreams, alhamdulillah. You know, I, I get revelations as well. Say no, this is only to the messengers because in wahi, by definition, revelation is only to the messengers and the prophets. Only the messengers, like we said before. Only the messengers and the prophets receive revelation or get revelation. Nobody else. So it, it can get revealed to them through the dreams or by, we call it al-ilham, which is where Allah Azza wa Jal makes it occur to the messenger to do something or say something or whatever he wants to inform him alayhim as-salatu was salam. This is what he said by وَأَنزَلَهُ إِلَى عَلَى عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَحْيًا So it was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The next statement, which is the 47th statement, he said وَصَدَّقَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ حَقًّا And the believers attest to it as being the truth upon that basis. Now, if you remember, last week, we actually said that these group of statements can be divided into three topics. Remember, the first one is that the Qur'an is Kalamullah. And all of these statements, 45th, 46th, 46th, 47th, are all talking about that topic. And this is actually a supporting statement. Yani this statement is supporting the 45th statement that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. He's saying, Imam Abu Ja'far, he's saying that the believers indeed, upon that understanding that we've explained now, the believers in Allah Azza wa Jal and His Prophet, they attest to that that the Quran is in reality the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. That the Quran is in reality the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that Muhammad is but a conveyor. Some uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam conveyed this to humanity, to Quraysh and to humanity. He is not the uh, the first, the one who spoke it in the beginning. It's not his speech, alayhi salatu wasalam, nor is it the speech of Jibreel. Now, some people may say, but wait a minute. He is the one, Jibreel is the one who came down with it. So don't we say that this is the speech of Jibreel? We say no. Always the speech is attributed to who? To the one who actually spoke it first, not the one who conveys it. We say uh, Jibreel conveyed it to Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Muhammad in turn, alayhi salatu wasalam, conveyed it to humanity. 
that doesn't make it their speech. The speech remains the speech of the one who spoke it first, who is Allah Azza wa Jalla. Similarly, yani, to Allah belongs the greatest example. But let me tell you, or let me just give you a, a quick comparison. Again, to Allah belongs the greatest example. But if now, for example, the president makes a statement through his press secretary, do we say that this is the statement of the press secretary? Or is this the statement of the president, but delivered by the press secretary? We say this is the president's statement, right? Although he didn't, he is the one, he isn't the one who delivered it. He is, but the press secretary is the one who delivered it. But this remains the statement of the what? Of the president. To Allah belongs the greatest example. We say that this is still the speech of Allah Azza wa Some people say, but, the, but Allah Azza wa himself refers or attribute this speech to Jibreel alayhi salam. For example, in the ayah of Surah al takwil Allah Azza wa says, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ ذِي قُوَّةٍ عِنْدَ ذِي الْعَرْشِ مَكِينٍ Verily, this is the word uh, a, a most honor of the most hon of a most honorable messenger, who is Jibreel alayhi salam. Because the one who is described as Rasul and Kareem is Jibreel alayhi salam. So Allah Azza wa Jal in this ayah is actually attributing the speech to Jibreel. So how do we reconcile now? We reconcile. And likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal in another ayah. Let, let me just say this other ayah because we're, then we're going to comment on both of them similarly. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the ayah of Surah Al-Haqqa, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ This is verily the word of an honored messenger, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which he has brought from Allah, but, and it is not the speech of a poet. Because they, uh, yani, uh, they accused him of being a poet, and this is his poetry, right? So Allah Azza wa is saying that this is the, the word of an honored messenger. How do we reconcile now between saying that this is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal and in these two ayat, in one of them is it, it is attributed to Jibreel and in another one is attributed to Allah, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We say that this is very easy. It is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, but in these two ayat, it is ref referred to Jibreel or Muhammad from the aspect of delivering it. Yani it is the speech that he is saying and he is conveying it but these are not his own words, right? Jibreel came down with it. He delivered this to the Prophet ﷺ. From that aspect, he is saying that this is قَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ Because he actually conveyed it. It is not his own speech in the beginning, originally. Likewise, Prophet Muhammad ﷺ delivered it as well. He is not the one who actually spoke it originally. It originated from Allah as something spoken. The other thing, we also can say that can the speech be attributed to more than one person or, one, or more than one? The speech can only be attributed to one person, right? Only one can sp say the speech, right? It cannot be attributed to multiple people. Like Allah Azza wa Jal is saying clearly in the Quran, Addressing his Prophet ﷺ, he said, "وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ." يعني if one of the mushrikeen asks for your protection, O Muhammad ﷺ, then grant him that protection. فَأَجِرْهُ until what? For what purpose? حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ so that he hears the speech of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal is clearly attributing this Qur'an, this speech to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can it now be attributed to somebody else in addition? Cannot, right? There's always one, one who spoke a, a certain speech, right? So we're saying attributing it to Jibreel and Muhammad in these two ayat previously that we mentioned is from the aspect that they conveyed it. Clear? Then in the next statement, Imam Abu Ja'far rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, وَأَيْقَنُوا أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِالْحَقِيقَةِ They have certainty. Who are they? Who are they? Mu'minun. Because this is what he said in the previous statement. He said, وَصَدَّقَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And their believers attest to it. Now he's saying, وَأَيْقَنُوا أَنَّهُ And they have certainty. 
So they is referring to al mu'minun the believers. They have certainty that it is the speech of Allah, the Most High, in reality. It is the speech in reality. It's not a figure of speech, right? It is not, uh, you know, meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal made. It is, the, uh, they have certainty, the believers have certainty that it is the speech of Allah, the Most High, in reality. So it's not a figure of speech, speech like I said, like some misguided groups claim that this is only a figure of speech, it's not in reality, or it is a meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal made it or created into Jibreel. We say, no, 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 no. And Imam Abu Ja'far is saying that, again, beyond the hint of doubt, and this is again a supporting statement, if there is any doubt left, Imam Abu Jafar is saying that this is in reality the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. It is, so attributing the speech to Allah is not a figure of speech, but it is a attributing to Allah Azza wa Jal in reality. It is a real uh, speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is why he mentioned or he used the word al haqiqah in reality, to leave out any doubt. It is in reality. Bil Hafiqa, it is the uh, speech of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Then he said, Laysa bi makhluqin bi makhluqin ka kalam al bariyah. It is not something created such as the speech of mankind. It is not the spe is something created such as the speech of mankind. This statement, brothers and sisters, actually, this is the second topic that we mentioned. The second topic under this. Uh, main topic which is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is that it is not created. That the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is not created. It is not something separate from Allah Azza wa Jal that is created but rather it is a an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's not created, he's saying notice that he is saying it's not created like the speech of the of mankind or, or of the humans. In this statement by the way, in this statement, Imam Abu Ja'far is actually answering back to two people, to two types of people. First, he is confirming that this is an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal not created. The Quran, which is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, is a sifa of sifatullah, that is an attribute of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, one of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is not created. Second, he's answering back to those who say, if you confirm or affirm this attribute of speech to Allah Azza wa Jal, now you're making it similar to, this, to, to, the, to the creation. He's saying, no, it is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, not created like the speech of the humans. Because the speech of the humans, my speech and your speech and her speech, it's all created like us. We are created, our deeds are created, and our attributes are created, including our speech. But the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is not created. Although this is speech and this is speech. Yani kalamullah and kalami, my speech, and your kalamuka, your speech, right? The term is similar to the term that we're using to Allah Azza wa Jal. We're saying the Quran is kalamullah. Kalam and kalam here. Does that mean that they are similar? You're saying no. Al Imam Abu Ja'far is saying no. It is a speech, but not created like the speech of the humans. So the speech of the humans, my speech and your speech is created, but the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is not. And that is why if you affirm that Allah Azza wa Jal has speech, and that this Quran is from his speech, you're not making it similar to the humans or the creation, nor are you saying that the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is created. It is not. Also, this is, like I said, this is actually a, you know, in, in a way he is refuting all of those who actually deny the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal out to run or to run away from making Allah Azza wa Jal similar to his creation. We say that this is not the case. Whenever we affirm the attributes to Allah Azza wa Jal that he himself affirmed in the Quran or that the Prophet Sallallahu affirmed in the Sunnah, we are not making Allah Azza wa Jal similar to his creation, but rather we're affirming the attributes that he affirmed to himself, and we're saying we don't know how. They're not similar. 
like you're saying here, they're not similar to those similar attributes or the same attributes that are in the in the creation. We see and Allah Azza wa Jal sees. We speak and Allah Azza wa Jal speaks. But our seeing and our hearing and our speech is are not similar to those similar to, to those attributes in Allah Azza wa Jal. Is that clear? Okay. With that said brothers and sisters just to summarize so that you can actually have a to be able to remember these what, what, what the summary of all of this discussion and what you need to remember from everything is that with respect to the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal we say that the Quran is the speech is Qalam Allah is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal and we also say that it, from him it began it originated from Allah Azza wa Jal and to him it shall go back to him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shall go back. And it is a revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal in reality. And it is not created. And it is not similar to the speech of the humans. Easy? Alhamdulillah. Who can repeat that? Now this is a different story. It was easy before, but now if you're asking us to repeat it, then... Uh, Okay, can you say it again? <laughs> right? One more time. I figured that. <laughs> it was easy a minute ago, right? When you said it, brother, it was free, very easy. Now, us repeating it. Uh, okay, can you say it again? <laughs> right. We say that what we need to remember of all of this discussion, right, from all these statements, is that the Quran is the speech of Allah. From Him it started. Yani from Allah Azza wa Jal, it started. To him, to Allah, it shall go back. It was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the Allah, it is Allah's speech in reality. And it is not created. And it is not similar to the humans, to the speech of the humans. Who can repeat these seven points? This is what we need to remember. This is, if we want to summarize everything, this is what we need to understand. And this is what we need to believe. If you believe in that, then you have the right belief in the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. How much more time do we have? That we have, so we still have some time. 10 minutes? 9.30 we pray? Okay. Yes, inshallah. Time. Who can repeat that? Come on, brothers. That's rocket science, you know? Come on. Time. Who can repeat some of them? At least help us, tell them. It's not created. But you know, a good way to remember, let's start kind of logically if you wish. We're talking about what? Quran. So first thing, first thing first, right? To set the basis. We're talking about the Quran. So what can we say about the Quran? The Quran is what? Allah's speech. So the first thing, the first thing, the basis is we say that the Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's one. Second, where did it come from? It started from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember he said to Imam Abu Jafar? He said, it originated. Yeah. Sorry. Let me choose a different color. He said it originated from him. So from Allah it started. It started from Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the second one. And then? To Allah it shall go back. That's the third one. Fourth one. It was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's fifth. Next. We understand that, obviously, because it is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. But we said also what? It's not created. The last one. It is his speech. It is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal in reality. It is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal in reality. Because that is what the Imam Abu Jafar said. It is uh, here. He said, it is the speech of Allah. Sorry. 
It is the speech of Allah in reality. So, again, one more time, or one last time, we say, this is what we need to remember, brothers and sisters. We say that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. Kalamullah. We say that it started from Him, from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To Him it shall go back. It was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not created. It is not similar to the speech of the humans, of the creation. It is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal in reality. Clear? Halas? Shall I test? No? Tayyip, halas. Then, we have another five minutes? Okay. Then he said, okay, we can start with this. SubhanAllah, I was actually hoping to finish this today, but here. That's fine. In the 50th statement, Alhamdulillah, that's a milestone. So we reached the 50th statement. That's a milestone, Alhamdulillah. فَمَنْ سَمِعَهُ فَزَعَمَ أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ الْبَشَرِ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ So whoever hears it and claims it is the speech of a human, then he has committed unbelief. This is actually now, in this statement, this is the third topic. That it is not the speech of the humans or, or, or the speech of any creation. Right? So in here, Imam Abu Ja'far, he is saying that whoever hears this Qur'an, whoever hears this Qur'an, and claims that it is the speech of a human, then he has committed unbelief. Then he is committed, then he has committed uh, disbelief. Why? Because he is denying that this Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. He is denying the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. If somebody says that this is not the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, this is the speech of a, of a human, then that person is denying that this is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is al-kufr. As a matter of fact, this is al-kufr al-akbar, the major kufr, the type of kufr that takes the person outside of the pale of Islam. And we're going to say in a moment why, as a matter of fact, Imam Abu Ja'far is saying that, and he is proving it why. So it is not the speech of a human. It is not the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not the speech of Jibreel alayhi salam. It is but the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And any person who attributes this speech to other than Allah Azza wa Jal, then he has committed kufr, disbelief or unbelief. Right? And this is exactly what Al Mushrikun have said. They said, and for example, Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al Nahl, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرٌ لِسَانُ الَّذِي يُلْحِدُونَ إِلَيْهِ أَعْجَمِيٌّ وَهَذَا لِسَانٌ عَرَبِيٌّ مُبِينٌ. And indeed, we know that they say, who they? Mushriki Quraysh, the Mushrikeen of Quraysh. Allah Azza wa is saying that we know what they say. They say it is only a human being who teaches him. Yani the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The tongue of the man they refer to is a foreign. He doesn't even speak Arabic. And this speech is in Arabic. So how can he teach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How is he teaching it and he doesn't even speak Arabic? And this Quran is in Arabic. So the tongue of the man they refer to is foreign, while this, yani the Qur'an, is a clear Arabic tongue. Look at the misguidance, wal'iyyadu billah. So Allah Azza wa Jal is, is, is uh, confirming that by claiming that this is not the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, that they are actually mushrikeen, right? And some others, they actually said that this is actually divination, kahana, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? Or that this is poetry of the Prophet ﷺ. Or they said that this is the speech of the human. Or that this is actually the legends of the previous people, of the pre previous nation. Right? Asatirul Awwaleen. How many times they refer, they refer to the Quran as Asatirul Awwaleen? All of these, right? Allah Azza wa is saying that these are mushrikeen. They, can, they, can, they are not, they are disbelievers because they attribute this speech to other than to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. And why do they do this? To push people away from this Quran so that they are not guided by this Quran, so that they don't actually listen to it. So that they don't listen to it. And but subhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal attested to this very reality that they actually, from their own insight, they understand that this is a speech like no other speech. And it cannot be but the speech of the Lord. But they actually, out of, you know, grandiose and out of, you know, not wanting to submit to the belief, they actually reject it. 
And maybe all of you, if not or most of you, know about the story of those three people from Mushriki Quraysh who were deniers of this Qur'an. They denied this Qur'an and rejected this Qur'an. And they, they agreed upon themselves that, we should, that they won't come to the Prophet ﷺ to listen to it. But then from the story we know that one of them actually came silently and secretly during the night to listen to the, rec to the recitation of the Qur'an of the Prophet ﷺ. And he was amazed by it. When he went back, he met the other two people on the way and knew that, learned that they were also, they came secretly, each one of them secretly, they came to listen to the re recitation. Then they said, okay, we're gonna agree that we're not gonna come back. The next day or next time, also he, the very same person, he came to listen and then he met the other two people. And a third time it happened. They know that this is the speech of Allah Azza wa It's a guiding, it's a light, but they won't, don't want to admit to it. The third time they said, okay, this is now, we're making a final agreement. We're going to agree, we will never go back. And listen, otherwise people will not believe us by rejecting and denying this speech. How can you deny it and now you're going secretly to listen to it? They said, we're not going to come back to, add, to that. And we're not going to go back to, and listen to the re recitation of the of the Quran. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Fussila, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Don't listen to it. وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ فَلَنُذِيقَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا And those who disbelieve say, listen not to this Quran. It is in for those three people who came, who came three times to listen. They said, Do, listen not to this Quran and make noise in the midst of its recitation. Uh, that you may overcome it. But surely, Allah Azza wa is saying, but surely we shall cause those who disbelieve to taste a severe tournament or torment, and certainly we shall require them the worst of what they used to say. So from the inside, they know that this is haq, and this is the truth, and this is the light, and this is the speech like no other speech. It, is, it cannot be but the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, but they actually deny it from the inside out of rejection of the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Um, this kufr, we said that this is, uh, Imam Abu Jafar is saying that whoever claimed that this speech is the speech of the human that he committed kufr. Why? In the next statement, and this is something that we're going to actually talk about in the next week, inshallah ta'ala, but I want to leave you with this. He is saying it is a kufr because Allah Azza wa Jal blamed and criticized that person and promised to throw him in hellfire. Sa'uslihi saqar. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, whoever says that this is the speech of the human, I will actually, uh, I will actually uh, punish him in hellfire. Uh, I will cast him into hellfire. Who is that person? Imam Abu Jafar is referring to the ayah before that in Surah Al-Muddathir, the person who says, in hadha illa qawlu al-bashar, sa'uslihi saqar. Allah Azza wa Jal is referring to that person and there is a story and there is an occasion for the revelation of this uh, 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 two ayah. We're going to talk about it next week, bi-idnillahi ta'ala, if we're still alive. But Allah Azza wa Jal is promising that person who claims that this is the speech of the human to throw him in hellfire eternally. This is why we say that that person is a disbeliever because Allah Azza wa Jal does not throw in hellfire eternally but the disbelievers. So that's why Imam Abu Jafar is saying faqad kafar, whoever who says that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the believers in Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are steadfast on the Sirat al Mustaqim, on the straight path until we meet Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the believers, the good doers, Al Muhsineen. هذا والله أعلم وبالله التوفيق وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد. Any quick questions? فضل. Quick. طيب. Quick. لا الكلام. It is no. It is actually the قول. The قول. It is attributed to the person who said it, where it may not be his original speech. The speech, the kalam, is of the original, per, uh, the, the one who said it first. But I can actually refer to, to something somebody else said, and it will be my qawl, right? But in terms of speech, it is the speech of the original, of who, where it originated from. You see the difference?
Yes, it can be qawl or it can be repeated by somebody else. Yeah. Do you want to make it adhan? Huh? Ammar. Oh, it's a man.